So this will be a multi-part video series where we document a project for a client that I have recently started working with who had a drainage way put into her property and I think rightly so is very concerned with the idea of the water rushing through on its way to the pond taking silt eroding as it goes and you can see as we go down slope here this cut pretty raw cut very fresh recent cut skirts on its way down and ultimately dumps straight into the pond that's a problem here's this beautiful pond in the hills here we're on an east facing slope this is impounded on that east facing slope and holds a fairly large bit of water she said this stays relatively or really nicely clear it's super cold so by all accounts it seems like a spring fed pond beautiful idyllic space for recreation for ecosystem service and habitat and now that this cut's been made silt is already starting to rush in this is only a few weeks in and we've already got a few thousand pounds of silt most likely coming in because the way the cut was done it just ends right here luckily they didn't cut all the way to the pond but there's silt already here and then it's rushing over and getting in so our work is to design and install a whole series of stone-based impoundments within this trench to allow the water to still move through but slow it, spread it, and sink it and increase the biodiversity and plant life that will help filter the water and extract a yield from it. So we're looking at watercress, uh, elecampane, valerian, uh, ronia, elderberry, black currant, all sorts of wet-loving plants that will ultimately go in here. The first order of operations is the hardscaping where we're going to go through set stones and create water bars that help redirect water back into this waterway but interrupt it periodically so it can drop its sediment. We're going to stop here and then take another video once we started getting some rocks laid in and some rough sketches in the landscape. We thought this would be a fun multi-part video to see how to take a raw cut meant ultimately for drainage from this whole hillside and turn it more into an ecosystem. So stick with us on all this. So here we are. It is three hours and 15 minutes since we started on this project and I just wanted to show some highlights of the work done thus far. It's not going to look too dramatically different but I figured I would go through and show where we've installed water bars, walkways, emergency overflows, uh, sediment catching pools, redirects, got some seeds down, put in some squash, and these two guys, along with Sam's mother, did some really, really beautiful work throughout here. So let's look at some details. So the first order of business, and one of the most critical parts, was to install these rock interruptions. So if you can imagine, uh, in spring thaw or after heavy rains coming off the hill, this pipe would be sending a tremendous amount of water, and now these rocks, these piles of rocks, can each reduce the flow and help trap sediment upslope, giving us uh, really rich sediment berms into which we can plant watercress, water celery, calamus, uh, water iris, all sorts of aquatic-ish plants. And what we did is cut down into the soil and put the heaviest stones first and then ever smaller stones in the trench itself, we threw the random small stones we found just to kind of uh, add more texture and interruption to the rate of flow. And instead of making one monolithic wall, we made a whole bunch of little ones. I should say Sam made a lot of them. Um, really creative teenage guy helping out here, did some beautiful work, each stack its own unique thing. This section in here, our other friend Ali dug out. And so this is like a swale that helps water that wants to slide across the landscape enter a walkway and feed a berm. As it overflows down slope, it can cascade over these steps and back into the common waterway. This has now been seeded out to a mix of mustard and shiso and some nitrogen fixers as an annual. Everything we're putting in right now are annuals with the idea that we'll return to this in the fall. These water berms, water bars, let's take a look at those. So one of the biggest issues coming into this project was a client indicated that water flowing down this hill, as you can imagine, would 
dumps soil and water up against this shed, which is somewhat poorly located down in a depression. And so by going through and doing minor earthworks where I've cut a minor trench and deposited the soil down slope, water sheet flowing across the surface, either with silt or not, is now going to hit this cut and come back into the common waterway and then be interrupted by the rocks over and over again. Onto these berms, we've transplanted ornamental and winter squash gourds and seeded it out to amaranth and calendula just to kind of hedge our bets and add some beauty and other elements. We also seeded out the waterway itself uh, with some daikon just to slow the water and soak up excess nutrient. These huge nuggets that were here, these roots, planted tomatoes next to them so the tomatoes can use this as a trellis for the season. Another minor water bar to redirect water directly back onto these stones and then a major water bar to take all of this water and pretty aggressively make sure it gets back where it belongs down into this waterway. Where this makes a strong cut, we were noticing that there was a legacy of silt being deposited here, which told us that water was coursing up and over and back flowing into here. So we created a series of impoundments, a more strong cut in the base, and then some stones to help make sure the water doesn't overflow. And then the dog will help keep the water from overflowing. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> you can see those steps again. This is where the swale ultimately dumps into so water can cascade over. A bunch of ornamental flowers, daikons, and more beautiful rock bars happening. Let's look at the last thing which will be an ephemeral settling pool. So this area is a little bit of a mess still, but if we come back to it, which we will in the fall, I think it'll make more sense what's happening. So the excavator crew took out a, I think it was an old walnut here, and they left the stump and they left the divot. And that's great, we're just designing around that rather than trying to move it away. And so what we're done, what we've done here is again, put in tomatoes all around the stump to let it be used as a trellis. And then anticipating sheet flow of water through the landscape over this area, I dug a minor water bar to send it back into this area, into this depression, taking all the soil from that and berming it on the low end here, planting it out to squash, and then making the overflow go back into our waterway, but with an opportunity for silt to settle, water to pool up, and then gently flow back without as much sediment in it is the path of least resistance for the least amount of earth moving to cut just there to get into this depression, cut in here and berm it to keep the water in, and cut just there and berm these to create a settling pool that will be filled with water periodically but will leach back down and return back to the waterway clean filtered water. That's as far as we got today. There's still another rock bar we'll put into here. You can see where I've keyed out for Sam to settle them in. And then we'll be designing and developing this space down here, cutting sod, creating berms to plant elderberry and currants to soak up all this, the last silt that comes through, and installing hardy kiwi posts to run trellising and have two planes of kiwi to frame this driveway. So all this work was done with four people. Um, in just a little over three hours with entirely exclusively hand tools and reusing the materials that were here. A little bit of in imported seed and a little bit of straw from off-site. This is human scale implementation of taking a, a raw cut waterway and thinking through how to have it filter, deposit sediment uh, and interact with the most with the landscape. We're gonna follow through with this. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. We'll be making updates as the seeds start to germinate, 
um, as this gets into full swing and then when we reassess this in the fall and apply the perennial elements. You can imagine uh, blueberries, currants, uh, Ella Campaign, she's indicated she may want sweet cherry trees. We may put in gumi and autumn olive to fix nitrogen, uh, dwarf sour cherries, uh, apricots, all sorts of riparian medicinals, bone sets and things along that line. Whole lot more layers to come in, but the basic physical hardscaping, the initial seeding with annuals is well on its way. And I would say for a very cost effective and energetic effective use of our time. Thanks for watching so far.